Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today, I'd like to do a direct comparison between the DJI Power 500 Portable Power Station and the Jackery Explorer 500 Portable Power Station because both of these are sort of mid-sized portable power stations that do a pretty good job of keeping all of your thirsty portable electronics fully charged when you're away from home on that long trip or you've had a power outage at the house. But even though they share similar features, there are pretty dramatic differences between the two and I'll explain how they're similar and how they're different so you can make the right choice on which of these two is right for your particular needs. So to start with, choosing a power station really requires thinking about what you're going to use it for because these are available in different capacities and if you pick one that's really large, which may seem like a simple decision, you've now got a gigantic power station that you're dragging out to your campsite or in your car every time you leave the home. So it's important to understand, are you going to use the power station for day trips out for camping or maybe a long road trip with the family or maybe a little bit of power if you lose power at home or do you need a bigger one that'll actually supply a lot more power to handle a power outage for a couple of days or maybe you want to put it in your RV. Both of these are really good power stations for taking out for that four or five days of camping or if you're out flying your drone and you need to recharge your drone batteries there are some advantages over here but both of them can actually charge those drone batteries so I'll get into all that but again the key point here is to decide how much power you need and balance that against the weight and other features both of these products provide so let me start off with the power 500 so what DJI has built here is a very compact portable power station that has 512 watt hours of internal energy that can supply 500 watts of external charging and operating capabilities that can surge to 1,000 watts. Now that's important because if you plug something in that draws a little bit more current when it first turns on, like a power drill or a blender, anything with a compressor or a motor in it, you need to know that the product can actually handle that additional surge so you're not popping a breaker. Over here, you have 518 watt hours of internal capacity, and you have some surge protection built in, but not quite as much as on the DJI. So if you plug a drill in over here, you're probably okay. If you plug something in that's bigger, that draws even more current, you may pop a breaker on the Jackery because it's a little bit of older technology, and the circuitry hadn't developed yet where they could actually build in that additional surge protection. Now, both of these units, again, are incredibly portable, about 13 pounds over here, about 18 pounds over here. And now I'm going to get into the major differences between them, because with any portable power station, there are three things you have to keep in mind. How do you charge it? What kind of battery technology is inside the unit to hang on to that charge? And then finally, once you have this charged battery and you take it out in the field, how can you use that internal energy to charge and operate external devices? And all three of those are very important. So let's talk about the charging capabilities. The DJI product can be charged in one of four ways. At home with an AC kit, actually DC kit in your car, a solar panel kit, or you can actually charge this through the bi-directional USB-C ports on the front with a standard 100 watt charger at home. With the Jackery product, you have three options. There's a DC connection right here on the front that you can use with the AC kit, you can use it with a car kit, and you can charge it from a solar panel. The big difference in the charging cycle is that all portable power stations have to convert, in the case of home charging, the 120 volts in a wall outlet to the correct voltage and current to charge the internal batteries. And they do that through what's called a conversion circuit. This unit uses an external conversion brick that does that conversion from the AC to DC. And the problem with that external brick is that it's incredibly inefficient. So you're wasting a lot of energy in the brick and you're also not getting as much current into the unit through that front DC port. So it takes quite a long time to charge this if you're pretty low in capacity. DJI has actually built that converter circuit, it's called a reverse inverter, into the unit. So you basically are gonna plug this directly into your wall and you can charge it incredibly quickly. So typically when you're using it for a long weekend of camping, you can recharge this unit in about 70 minutes, which is pretty incredible because if you think about heading out for your trip and maybe you forgot to charge your portable power station and you get up that morning and you think, I gotta charge that before we head out, you're gonna plug both of these in. This one could take a couple of hours to fully charge it. This one, you can go get a cup of coffee, finish packing, it's gonna be fully charged and head out the door. Another key feature is charge through capabilities. Both of these units have charge through capabilities and what I mean by that is once you plug them into a home outlet, you can actually charge the internal batteries while you're charging external devices from the product. So that's really nice because if you've got a phone or a tablet or drone batteries, you can plug these in, plug the drone batteries into them and then charge those external drone batteries at the same time. The difference is the amount of ports and I'll get into that in a minute. 
All right, so we understand the charging capabilities. The one thing about the DJI product, though, is that they don't provide any outside connections for a car kit or for a solar panel. Both of those require an accessory. They're not terribly expensive, but you'll need a specialized cable to charge it in the car, and you'll need another cable to charge it from the solar panel. And it's a bit of a trade-off because what DJI's done here is they built in a very specialized connector called a software-defined charging connector. I'll explain the benefits of that in a minute, but that's used to charge the unit from DC, like from a solar panel or from your car, or through, you know, you can do it through the USB-C as well, but both of those adapters allow you to convert whatever external charging you've got from a solar panel or from your car into the voltage to charge it. And the trade-off is that software-defined port does a whole lot more. It's a very advanced technology that will quickly and safely charge your drone batteries way faster than any other portable power station on the market. And it has other advantages as well. And I'll get into that when I talk about how you connect to it. All right, so let's talk about battery technology next because that is a very important thing to consider whenever you're searching for a portable power station. There are several different types of battery chemistries on the market. The standard battery chemistry up until a couple of years ago was based on, based on lithium polymer technology or LiPo technology, which is a pretty good battery technology. It's used in laptops and phones and a lot of portable devices. But the challenge with LiPo technology is the battery chemistry is very sensitive to power, I should say temperature changes. So if you're going out on a camping trip and it's really hot or it's really cold, LiPo technology doesn't like that. So you can't really charge it when it's hot or it's really cold and you can't really use it when it's hot or cold either. So if you're on a camping trip, Think about the temperature. It's going to be hot in the tent. It's going to be cold in the winter time. So LiPo technology is okay for smaller portable devices, but it's not that great for portable devices like these. The latest technology for chemistry in the batteries is called lithium iron phosphate, which is a wonderful technology. It handles the temperature swings better. It also retains the charge longer. But the important thing is the number of charge cycles that it provides. LiPo technology is in here and that provides about 300 to 500 charge cycles, which means if you drain it and charge it and drain it and charge it, you're only gonna get between 300 and 500 charge cycles. And when you get closer to that 500 mark, you won't be able to charge it fully. Over here, lithium iron phosphate technology, well over 3,000 charge cycles, a factor of 10 more charge cycles on this unit, which means if you charge it once a day, and you're not going to charge it once a day, but if you did, you'd have well over 10 years of charge cycles on this unit. And the reason that's important is because the battery can't be changed. It's sort of the first thing that goes into the power station, and if the battery wears out, the whole power station is kind of at that point useless. So knowing you've got lithium iron phosphate here versus LiPo here means you're going to get a lot longer use out of the Power 500 than you will from the Explorer 500. All right, so we understand how to charge it. We understand what kind of battery chemistry is inside the unit. Now the big question is, once I have that gigantic battery fully charged and I'm out there on my camping trip, what can I use that internal energy to charge externally? So I'll talk about ports. There are typically three ways that you can use energy from a portable power station for external devices. AC, like in your home, so something you plug into your wall, you can plug into the power stations. DC, like in your car. USB, like you'd use with a standard USB wall charger. Or in the case of this DJI product, you've also got that software-defined port. And I'll explain that last. So both of these units provide AC, they provide the capabilities to use DC, and they also provide the capabilities to do USB. The advantage to the uh, Explorer, I'm sorry, the Power 500 is that it also provides that SDC port, which is a unique way to charge external devices. And again, I'll get into that in a second. So let's compare the two. Let's start with the AC. So on this unit, you've got a single AC port right there. It's a three-prong AC port, which means you can plug in a standard extension cable that's got a grounding plug on it, and you can draw up to 500 watts of external power from that AC. Both of these provide what's called pure sine wave output, and that's really important because a lot of the portable power stations in the market are still using a modified sine wave, which is not great for sensitive electronics. Both of these have pure sine wave output, and that's just like the power you get at home. So with this unit, I've got one. With this unit, I've got two. So I can plug two things in at the same time. So that's kind of an advantage for the Power 500. If I'm talking about DC output, this unit has a DC port just like in your car. So anything you plug into your car, you can plug in there. It also has two uh, modular plugs over here that are barrel connections where you can get accommodating cables to charge external devices like a laptop, a game console, other things, or you can find adapters that will convert those two barrel connections into additional AC port or DC ports like that. So with this one, there are accessories that allow you to use that a little bit more uh, easily, I guess, than you would on the uh, DJI product. Now with DJI, you don't see a DC output here. And the reason for that is because they built in this software-defined port above it 
right there. And that software defined port can use a wide range of different accessories. And there's a DC kit you can use to actually connect up external devices through a DC connection, just like you can over here. And the reason that that isn't built into the unit, quite honestly, is that I'd rather have a universal port like that that I can connect up to as an input, I can connect it up to my car or a solar panel, or as an output, I can connect it to a port just like in my car, or I can connect it to my drone batteries to charge those quickly. So again, if you're flying a drone, especially if you're flying like the DJI Air 3 or the Mavic series, this unit has adapters that plug into that software to find port that will actually safely and quickly charge those drone batteries in less than an hour. You can't get close to that over here. It's hours of charging on this side. So if you're flying a drone, this is a home run. This one will work, but it's gonna take an awful long time. This charges those drone batteries so quickly that if you have three drone batteries, you can be flying with one, charging another one, and have a spare one on the ground. You can land your drone, swap it out, and by the time you swap out that battery, that third battery will be charged. So you could essentially fly all day using this one. With this one, it could take an hour or two to charge that battery. So you've got to land it, wait for the battery to finish, and then put it back up. So drone flyers, this is absolutely the way to go. The other thing to keep in mind around that software-defined port is that there's a wide range of other things that can be used with that software-defined port because that port is intelligent. And what I mean by that is when something's connected to it, whatever that accessory that's connected to it is, the, the unit itself will look at that accessory and make whatever adjustments are needed for the voltage and current to safely and quickly charge that external device. So DJI could use that software to find port for other adapters down the road. New drones are coming out, laptop connections, a lot of other things could be used with that software to find port. Here you're limited to just the DC port right there. That's all you'll ever do with it. So you'll need some type of external adapter to make those changes. Again, older technology, newer technology. All right, let's talk about the USB connections because that's really important because most of the devices you're gonna bring out in the field are gonna charge through USB. There are two styles of USB connections. USB-A and USB-C. The USB-A connections are the older, larger connections that we've been using since the beginning of time. And you have a, probably a charger at home, you probably have cables at home that plug into USB-A. USB-A is kind of an interesting port because everything nowadays is moving towards a USB-C, which is the smaller connector. This unit provides only USB-A connections right here on the front, and you have three of them. So you can use the older USB-A cables on this unit and charge those external devices just like you do at home. Over here, You've got two USB-A connections and two USB-C connections. So you can charge with either cable on this one. So if you've got a newer phone, a newer tablet, drone battery chargers, whatever you're using, you can use the USB-As and the USB-Cs. So the connections, again, USB-A only, USB-A, USB-C. So you've got more versatility here. But the bigger thing is both of those connections offer two different styles, actually three different styles of charging capabilities. The standard charging, which this one has right here, which is five volts and up to two amps, you've got three of them, which is okay. That's the standard charge. So if you're used to using a standard charger at home, it'll take a while to charge your phone or your tablet. It'll take forever to charge your drone batteries through those USB-A ports. But over here, you've got the quick charge standard on the USB-A ports, which is a technology that if you have a quick charge device, which most devices today, they're a quick charge, uh, plug in through USB-A. When you make that connection, the unit will actually look at the device you've plugged in and it'll rationalize what kind of charge it needs, and it can actually adjust the voltage and current to quickly and safely charge that device. And as that battery fills up on that device, it can adjust the voltage and current back so it trickle charges it. So with this one, using the QC connection, I can charge phones and tablets and other devices that use the quick charge standard way faster than I can with a standard 5 volt 2 amp outlet. So speed is of the essence here. I can charge quicker over here. But the big difference is the addition of these two USB-C ports up top because USB-C again is the latest standard, but it also has its own quick charge standard called Power Delivery or PD. And most drone batteries, a lot of cameras, a lot of Android products use that USB-C with the PD standard, which again is a quick charging standard that looks at the device, adjusts the voltage and current to charge that device quickly and safely. But again, the major difference here is those USB-C ports are up to 100 watts. And that's incredible. Most portable power stations on the market, if they have a PD port at all or a USB-C port at all, it's probably 30 watts or 45 watts or 60 watts if you're lucky. To have two ports at 100 watts means I can charge gigantic portable devices like the larger tablets, like game consoles, like drone batteries, like your laptop. You can't plug a laptop in over here and have a charge in under a day. Over here, you can plug a laptop in. It's going to charge just as quickly as it does at home. 
So the versatility here between the two quick charge USB-A ports and the two PD USB-C ports that are 100 watts each means all of your portable devices will charge dramatically faster on this unit than they do over here. Also, that software defined port was tailor made for drone flyers. So if you're flying an Air 3, you're flying a Mavic 3, I'm sure they'll come out with other adapters, maybe for the Mini 4 Pro and, and other drones, but right now it's the Air 3 and the Mavic 3 and a couple of other larger drones like the Inspire. You can get an adapter, plug it in there, pop a battery in it, and charge it faster than you can any other way. You can charge it in less than an hour, which again, I think is astounding. Anyway, that's the major difference between them. So both of these products are decent. I like them both, I've used them both for a long time. What I like so much about the DJI product, you can tell I'm leaning this direction, is it's new technology. It's got better battery chemistry, lithium iron phosphate versus lithium polymer. It's got a wider selection of external ports. So I've got a lot more connectivity over here where I can charge things. If I'm a drone flyer and I am, this is the one I want to use because it's going to quick charge my batteries. Where over here, it's just a standard charge. The advantage to this one is that it's got the built-in DC. So if you care about that, this has got the DC port, but you can get an adapter for very little money over here that'll do the same thing. And the other advantage with this one, if I can say it, is it's a little bit lighter. So 13 pounds versus 18 pounds. But honestly, they both have handles on the top of them. They weigh about as much as the average cooler that you've got, you've got some ice and some drinks in. So both of them are ultimately portable and the choice is yours. So hopefully you found this review helpful. I've liked talking about them. I use them out in the field. I use them all the time when we're out camping or on a long trip, and they work really, really well. So again, that's all I had for today. Hope you found this review helpful. And until next time, as always, <laughs> stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.